All right, peace to you, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Now, in today's video, I'm just gonna go over my workout setup and my general routine for staying healthy, staying in shape, and because I know a lot of you have asked me about that, or a few of you at least in my comment sections in previous videos, and I haven't gotten around to it because I've been tangled up in more scholarly issues, but I figured now, might as well, since I'm catching a workout outside, I can go ahead and let you know what I do to stay in shape. So, to give you a reference point, I'm about 5'10" probably more like five nine and a half 170 pounds let's say yeah a buck 70 I don't know 14 15 percent body fat something like that and my whole workout style everything I do I don't lift any weights at all from the accessory work my biceps even my traps everything I do is purely calisthenics and I have chosen calisthenics for a specific reason it's just in my opinion the most beneficial style of working out so the first benefit of calisthenics so actually let me break it down even more I don't believe in counting reps I don't believe in counting calories I don't believe in complicating things and doing things that men of old have not done these modern inventions of counting calories and counting reps first principle is uh, I like to get outside when I work out and that's something that calisthenics affords me right I'm allowed to go outside right now it's uh, it looks like a beautiful day but it's actually deceptively freezing it's uh, below freezing right now but the thing is when you get outside you will feel so much better working out outdoors you know getting that pump on getting the sunlight in your eyes it's so beneficial to your health so even above uh, I, I, I would say that the man who let's say he just goes out on a walk outside a light walk and gets the sunlight he did a healthier activity than somebody in these gyms with all this Wi-Fi all this uh, wireless technology all these artificial lights flashing on him I think the guy who got outside and walked is better but of course it's nice to go outside and work out so first point is get outside whenever you can even if it's a little chilly your body will heat up and uh, it'll feel good it'll feel good second point is uh, I stick to high reps and I'll show you I'll break down my workout routine afterwards what I do throughout the week I work out seven days a week but uh, high reps is better because honestly I don't feel like when people are or not I should say feel I, I don't think that lifting really heavy weights for decades on and really really heavy like you know three rep sets two rep sets one rep sets loading your spine with hundreds and hundreds of pounds a week I personally don't think that's best for people in the long run I think it might lead to certain skeletal muscular issues over time other people might say oh you know just do it with correct form and that's fine you know if you want to do that but I, I think that this might degenerate the body over time that's why I stick to high reps and one thing about the calisthenics is it forces you to move your body through space you move your whole body like a unit you get a full range of motion a lot of these lifters man they develop back problems so they're kind of jacked they're kind of big but they're kind of hunchbacked you know, they, they got issues, they got problems with their shoulders, they're very stiff on that bench. This forces you to move your body through space, you get a full range of motion. So not only, and it's a cardio workout as well, because every exercise is using your whole body. You're using your abs, your, your back muscles, everything to stabilize. It's cardio and it's a stretch as well. So it keeps you in good shape because really, I'm about health and longevity. Could I get more jacked if I lifted weight for th weights for three hours a day? Probably. Yeah, but I don't care about being super duper jacked. I care about having a nice, lean, athletic physique, being healthy and feeling good every single day. And praise the Lord that I've done that up till now. I've been like that. So that's the second point. I would say high rep calisthenics. And my workout protocol is essentially, so like I said, seven days a week. Let's say the week starts on, the workout week starts on Monday. Monday, I'll do ring dips and I'll have uh, images of me doing each of these exercises so you can see. I'll do ring dips and ring pull-ups. I will not count my reps. I will just do it and keep doing it back and forth. I'll superset everything as well. So when I'm doing a push like this, I'm doing a pull like this. So ring dips and pull-ups. And I'll do that for as many reps as I can, back to back, set after set. And then finally, I'll call it a day whenever I feel like I've exhausted my body. Next day, so Tuesday would be what I was doing today, just right now. So before, let's say it was lower chest and triceps and uh, lats with my pull-ups. Today is kind of mid chest and shoulders with just a regular ring push-up. And I'll do some kind of mid back exercise. It could be whether I'm using the single ring to lift myself up it could be if I'm using the fixed bar like this, you know, lifting my body up. Just anything to get that mid-back going. 
that will be Tuesday. Wednesday will be some kind of shoulder and upper back. So I'm kind of moving my way up my upper body. So what I do for shoulders is it's kind of, I don't know if this has a name. I, I just do whatever feels good on the muscle, whatever burns. I don't overthink these things. Maybe it's like a gymnastics pike press. But yeah, I'll get up on my toes. I'll stick my butt up and I'll dip myself down as far as I can and kind of overhead press my body up. And remember, everything is supersetted. So dip, pull up, push up, and uh, kind of body weight row and pike press. And I'll also do this as well for my traps, a body weight trap exercise, believe it or not. I'll hang on a bar like this and I'll just shrug. And you'll feel this pump going in your traps. Just shrug it, shrug it. You can also do it on the rings as well. I'll see if I can do it with a single ring right here. Lift that up. You know, you hang. Even just hanging like this, you'll feel this pump in your trap and you shrug it, shrug it. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Actually, no, no, no sorry, I, I mixed it up. The, the shoulder and trap workout, that's going to be on Thursday. Wednesday will be biceps and triceps. And what I'll do for biceps and triceps, everything, same principle. Super setted and also not worrying at all about how many reps. Just Some days I feel stronger, some days I feel weaker. I'll do kind of a, a bicep body weight curl. So I'm not doing a normal chin up, which targets the lats, but I'm kind of pumping just like this. There's a certain angle you gotta feel your body at, and you're gonna get the pump on your bicep. I'll do that, and ring tricep extension. Let me lower this one down a bit to show you that. You could do it with a single ring or two rings. Oh, jam. And I'll just extend, extend. That will be Thursday, Friday, legs. I'll just do squats and lunges. Full range of motion squats, full range of motion lunges till my legs are dead. And I'll also do forearms as well. So I'll do pull-ups, but I'll do the reverse grip version, just like this. And that'll pump the forearms. And throughout the week, I'll maybe throw in neck, abs whenever I feel like it. And that's essentially my, my workout protocol. Let's say that routine is done on Friday. I don't take a day off Saturday and Sunday. I'll go back to doing the same ring dips and pull-ups on the Saturday, and I'll just keep repeating it over and over. So that's generally what I do to stay in shape. Like I said, it's all calisthenics, it's all high reps. That's what I feel like is the best for longevity, health, and gains too. You're not missing out on any gains. High reps is the way to go, super setting. And as for my diet, you know, just avoid. So I, I generally eat one main meal a day, one large meal. And it's usually, a, I'll, I'll post maybe photos of what my wife cooks for me. It'll be a large bowl of meat, either be chicken. My favorite is beef. Some vegetables cut up in there. And so it'll be one large meal a day of, of pretty much solely meat. And I'll snack on maybe fruits throughout the day. So figs, it can be a banana, raisins, whatever. And nuts. I'll, I'll snack on figs and nuts and berries. Fruits and nuts throughout the day. And then finally, the, my large meal for the night after my workout is a, a big bowl of meat. And that's pretty much it. I, I eat liberally. I put tons of butter, tons of ghee, tons of fat. There's no issue there. You don't need to be worried about saturated fat and cholesterol, okay? That stuff is good for you. It's a big agenda, this vegan agenda, trying to make you afraid of saturated fat and cholesterol. The most coveted foods in human history, the most sought after goods, the most nutrient dense. Let me tell you, your cholesterol is, that, that cholesterol and saturated fat in that food, the, those animal products that you're eating, the cheeses, Th those are like the firemen in your body. They're putting out all the issues, all the problems, all the cancerous uh, things that are forming within there. That's actually putting it out. That's what's keeping you alive. So you don't need to avoid those. Eating fat does not make you fat. Eating processed junk does make you fat. Okay. Another point is uh, 
I, I kind of, if you want a good reference point, I think generally speaking, the best diet or the, the diet that I felt the best on is not carnivore or things like that. I think you do need to have carbs, but try to get them from fruits. And you can check out Paul Saladino. He specializes in that diet. I, I essentially eat like him. Fruits, maybe I throw in nuts. He doesn't really like nuts. I do. Fruits, nuts, and mainly meat, an animal-based diet. I tend to avoid grains, not because I think they're bad, but grains do help you gain weight. And I don't have a problem with that, obviously. I'm not overweight. I don't have any issue with uh, gaining weight. Uh, I can gain 5 or 10 pounds and still be okay. But I know the majority of people in the West, their problem is not being underweight, but being overweight. So I generally tend to stay away from grains just because it helps. It, it makes staying lean effortless. And I like staying lean and ripped year-round athletic. Uh, the more grains you eat, the more puffy you tend to be. Now, when I say grains, whenever I do you know, treat myself with some grains, I only eat quality grains. So it'll be like a roti or I don't know if you guys know Pakistani Indian cuisine, chapati, roti. It'll be white rice, brown rice, something like that. Never any processed grains. I don't eat that stuff ever. It's My diet is more so about eating. It, don't think of what you can eat but rather what you can't eat not actually not no, no no think not so much about what you're going to eat but rather the quality of the thing that you're going to eat so when i do eat carbs and it, I, sh I shouldn't say carbs people say a oh, low carb diet really uh, I'm, I'm on a low grain diet i love carbs i get my carbs from fruits but uh if you're trying to gain some weight if you're severely underweight perhaps put some grains it'll put some meat on you for sure if you're trying to bulk up if you like staying lean or you want to lose fat cut out the grains on Automatically, you're going to see that that weight is going to just start coming off effortlessly. And uh, stay away from any garbage in terms of preserve. A, a great rule of thumb that I've made up is if the, the that food item that you're eating or that ingredient in that food item you're eating, if it has not existed for the past 200 years, let's say you go 200 years in the past, that thing didn't exist, don't eat it. Don't eat it. So... Uh, Let's say canola oil. Canola oil didn't exist 200 years ago. Don't eat it. Apples existed 200 years ago. You can eat that. So um, all, all these so-called foods that have come out of the modern world and modern industry, I would stay far away from them. Uh, seed oils are a big one. Preservatives. Uh, artificial dyes. Soy. This stuff is everywhere. You know what? Perhaps, uh, Lord willing, later on in the video, I'll show you some examples of foods that I would avoid in, in the grocery store. And a lot of things that you think are good are actually bad for you. I, I am a food militant jihadist, okay? It's not like, oh, every once in a while I'll treat myself to, I don't know, uh, a box of chocolate. Never, never. I don't eat it. And the reason is I, I, I stand for true health and true fitness. That is what I love. Not necessarily being jacked and being the biggest and these, uh, don't, don't, you know, like this whole modern fitness industry of, you know, downing protein shakes and powders and potions. Don't eat any of that stuff. It, it, I stand for real health. And j just because you have ripped six pack abs and your guns are hugging the sleeves, it doesn't mean that you're in good shape. It doesn't mean that you're eating the healthiest food. And it, I think of food as a way of either getting closer to the Most High or further away from the Most High. So if you can think about, uh, if, if I eat healthy, nutritiously dense food, it's going to bring me closer to God. If I eat garbage that has just been invented in the modern world that's destroying my insides, it's not just making me look bad. The, the bad looks and the low quality skin, so you don't have a shine in your skin, and the pudgy body, your belly hanging over your belt, that's the least of your concerns. Your main concern is that these foods are going to bring you further away from God. They're going to cloud your spiritual receptors, you know, to the subtleties of creation. Your food affects the way you think. It affects your spirit. It's, everything is connected. So, like, it's for that reason, that principle, I don't... I put health first, not necessarily looking big. I could probably be bigger. I could probably be more jacked if I just down a protein shakes, but I'm not going to do that because, yeah, I might have protein. Yeah, it might make me big, but look at all the artificial flavors and preservatives that are in all of these protein shakes. You see these guys, uh, red pill YouTubers, um, 
you know, they're jacked or in shape, but they're not really about true holistic health. They, uh, for them, all it is is they just want to have a six pack and big muscles so they can go out and sleep with a bunch of girls and attract them. That's it. Uh, I remember watching this one guy. His name is Big Brandon Carter, one, another one of these dudes, you know, get rich, get women, do this, do that. He promotes that kind of ideology. And uh, I remember him saying in one of his videos, he was showing his like keto pantry, what his, uh, his fridge looks like what he keeps in there and uh, he drinks diet cokes he drinks this, these aspartame drinks he said i love aspartame i'm a huge fan of aspartame and it's like uh yeah aspartame may not make you gain weight it doesn't have calories perhaps uh that 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 regular coke with the sugar in it is going to give you more weight but uh, is it healthy for you? No, they, they don't care about health. So long as their abs look good, they're happy. And that's not what I'm promoting to you today. I'm promoting to you real health. So again, stay away from anything artificial. And I can go on a whole rant about the fitness industry. And, you know, and, and this whole idea of a calorie. You know, you look at the, the village man of Pakistan, the village man of India, slim, in shape, athletic, working hard. They look good, way better than us. Uh, they didn't know what a calorie was. And, you know, it's all about low calories, low calories. Don't, don't think in terms of these numbers, carbs, proteins, fat. Just think in terms of quality, eating quality. And specifically on the issue of calories, yeah, the person who is drinking their Diet Coke, they could very well still be ripped and have six-pack abs. They're not going to gain weight from that Coke. But then it's like, what are you drinking? If, if there's no energy component, other than maybe the caffeine, if there's no nut nutritional energy component, it's not depositing anything to your body, whether it's muscle or body fat. It's like, what's, what's giving that Coke its taste? It's just nothing but pure chemicals. These people don't stand for health. I do. So that's why I recommend you guys eat natural, eat good always. It's actually our Quranic duty. God says in the Quran, and I think about this verse often regarding diet, is eat what is good and lawful from the earth, from the earth, and do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. And notice how God, he links following the footsteps of the shaitan to eating bad things, eating unlawful foods. And I see all of these things, all this, these modern inventions, uh, culinary inventions, I shouldn't even call them foods, these GMOs. Um, artificial flavors and colors. This stuff is haram, man. I see it as haram. Uh, God says to eat what is good and lawful from the earth. That means natural. We are natural beings. God made us from the earth. He used the earth to form us. When we start introducing things that have been altered, you know, you even have shaitan, he says, I will command them, they will change the creation of God. Things that have had their natural created form changed, altered, destroyed, not from the earth, and we introduce them into our body, our body doesn't even know what to do with it. It doesn't know how to handle substances like that because it doesn't know how to process it and take it or, or, or break it down into anything. So it just becomes tumors and cancers and sickness later on. So that's why I say, again, don't worry so much about what you're eating, but rather worry about the quality from where you're getting it. And have general goals in mind. You want to gain weight? Okay, then perhaps... Uh, Pack on a few more grains onto your plate. If you're trying to lose some weight, then, you know, put the grains aside, stick to mainly meats. High fat, high fat as well. That, that, that's where the quality is. Another point on health is uh, I want to talk about sleep schedules, okay? I'm going to tell you, um, I think one of the main issues with the Western man and Western woman regarding their consistent lack of energy, their suffering from constant slumber and being tired all the time it, it's not so much that we don't sleep enough like today i i've only got maybe four hours of sleep and i i'm fasted and i worked out outside and i feel great i, I think the main issue is our timing for sleep if if you sleep eight hours a day like you know you get your recommended eight hours that you need but you wake up in the middle 
of the afternoon there's no amount of time or at night um there's no amount of time that you could sleep which will make you feel good it's the timing is off i found that even though sometimes if i slept eight nine hours but i wake up in the afternoon at night time i feel groggy and i feel tired all day long but if i sleep let's say for three four hours but i wake up before the sunrise i wake up before the sunrise i feel far better just like today i'm underslept clinically speaking but i woke up before the sunrise i feel great i feel better than many other days i've slept a lot longer so it's, it's more so timing you have to align your body with the natural heavenly cycle that god has put above you when you live against nature you live against a created world which god has put you in then your body is going to suffer from it it's not just the light of the sun when the sun is near you when the sun is overhead to wherever you live it it has certain electromagnetic ethereal frequencies that your body connects to it knows it needs to be awake right now but right now you're sleeping or it knows it needs to be sleeping right now but you're awake and that's why things like night shifts they're really hard they're hard on the body there's no amount of time you can sleep to make a night shift somebody who's let's say working night shifts feel on top of the game it's just not going to happen because the, the the earth at least the part of the earth that you're on when it's nighttime it has a certain electromagnetic ethereal frequency which your body understands it needs to be resting but right now you're i don't know stocking groceries overnight and i get it uh some people they got to do that to feed their family and whatnot and maybe they don't have another option you're sacrificing your health, but I, I respect the grind. I respect the grind and I respect the hustle. But I would say uh, nothing's worth sacrificing your health. Most important thing in your life is the Almighty. And second most important thing I would say is your health. Don't sacrifice it. Pray to God for something better. But uh, that, that's my second point. And that's why these people, the Western man, he cannot get by without these stimulants. Alcohol, weed coffee huge coffee addiction i don't believe in any of these things that stimulate my body i like operating purely off of the energy that god has given me not artificial energy from outside substances and if you eat a bad diet you eat a, a, a nutritionally deficient diet you don't live in line with the heavenly bodies and and their cycles then you're gonna have to start to enlist all of this outside help from caffeine and things like that and it only makes things worse when you drink coffee you're borrowing tomorrow's energy for today you know you, you take eight hours of energy tomorrow and kill that to give yourself maybe four hours of energy now and then tomorrow you're going to be double as tired you're going to need even more coffee don't be dependent okay you know it, it, you, you start to develop this dependency don't be like that uh people when i'm when i'm at work and i talk to employees co-workers and i tell them i I work out, I go to work fasted, I only eat one meal a day and that's when I come home at night time when my wife cooks for me. Uh, they're surprised, they're like, how do you have all this energy? You're working out, you're in shape, you're uh, employed, you're doing your job and everything and you have no food and you no water and you... It's because I try my best to live according to nature and I eat a good diet. I don't eat anything that hasn't come from the earth. And uh, another thing I want to talk about regarding health is... The importance of remembering God and praying. That's the most important thing. Because all these things I told you are great. They'll keep you in shape for sure. But uh, uh, true health comes from God. We have the verse in the Quran where Abraham says, When I am sick, God heals me. And that, that that's the summary of the matter good health comes from the lord so on top of doing all those things pray pray for you pray for your family god give me wealth not sorry wealth too if you want huh give me health give me abundance give me a body that is not hindered by basic tasks and movements give me a, a strong and sharp mind that isn't clouded by fog all day long you do everything you can on your end so living in accordance with the heavenly cycles eating good foods exercising you, you know that whole saying you don't use it you lose it you use your body properly and then you pray to god he'll take care of the rest man he'll take care of the rest health ultimately comes from the most high and uh, another thing that just came to my mind which is uh, i think most of the people who watch my channel are well aware of this uh don't put any synthetic pharmaceuticals in your body okay don't take any drugs don't take any meds don't take any uh antidepressants none of this stuff okay this stuff will just destroy you 
is from the shaitan. It's a, it's a form of sorcery, and it's how he gets you um, under his foot and dependent and weak. Of course, uh, don't take any jibby jabs, any shots in the arm. I mean, if you look, okay, um, the, the the worst. So spe uh, uh, speaking of these jabs, and I'm, I, I don't want to say anything too explicit because I don't want to get censored. If you look um, anywhere in nature where... Actually, let, let me rewind that a bit. Um, God has put in our body when we eat things. And let's say you eat, you ingest a toxin, a toxin excuse me, through your mouth and your throat. Uh, there are filtration systems in the body that help deal with these kinds of toxins. And uh, if when it goes through that stream. But if somebody injects it straight into your bloodline... Without going through that filtration system, the toxin is the most potent, the most damaging to the human body. And that is why they've chosen uh, jabs as uh, their most effective and most, I should say, they're the most enthusiastic about giving you jabs. Because not only does the toxin get inside of you, it, it doesn't even pass through any of the natural filtration and defense mechanisms that God has put within our body to protect us. And just... Think about nature for a second. Uh, when, when something is injected directly into your bloodstream, not being swallowed, uh, anywhere else in the natural world, that, that's something to kill you, okay? A snake, when it bites you, it injects its venom directly into your bloodstream. A stingray, when it hits you, it, directs, it uh, goes directly into your bloodstream. Whenever you get stung, stabbed, when something pierces your skin to directly put its liquid into your bloodstream, that is designed to kill you. Yet you think these shots are good for you? Come on, man. But that's a given and obvious. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm in Walmart right now. And I'll just give you a little bit of an example of what I would pick up, what I wouldn't, just to kind of go through a grocery shopping experience with you to let you know how I eat, what I eat, and how I filter out the garbage because there's so much misinformation out there. So we'll first begin with this. All this, obviously, completely off limits. Just uh, filled with MSG, artificial salts, artificial sweeteners, and uh, also canola oil, seed oil, completely off limits. Generally speaking, with the grocery store, you want to stick around just the outside. So the meat, dairy, deli, fresh produce. Don't go on the inside with all the packaged, preservative, processed stuff because that's the stuff that's going to destroy you and uh, even cause you to go bald. You wonder why so many young men these days, by the age of... It, this is not normal, okay? By the age of 20, 19, 18, 17, they're going bald, their hair's falling out. That's accelerated aging, and that's happening because of how they're treating their bodies. It's the food, man, that's causing them to go bald. <laughs> uh, balding, it, it's a sign of aging. It's uh, your, your body is getting weaker, and it's shedding a lot of its hair. It's not supporting what it's always had. And you see this in elderly men. It's normal, 60, 50 you know, 45, 70 year old men, uh, they start to thin out a little bit. And I'm not talking about having a maturing hairline. Your hairline goes a little bit back as time goes on. That's normal. I'm talking about the actual balding, like chunks popping out or chunks of your hair falling out. Why is that going on with young men? Young men who should be at fighting age. It's because of the food. It's because of the food. It's accelerating their aging. Their body is deteriorating quicker. So obviously all this, I know it looks delicious looks really good uh, but can't have any of it uh, maybe one of them maybe one of them perhaps a hagen -Dazs. but uh, you got to look at the ingredients so let's say i'm trying to pick up something um, this is the filtration process so i just picked up uh, vanilla swiss almond hagen -Dazs. it's pretty high quality ice cream generally but uh, you, you got to check the ingredients so cream is okay sugars I'm not a big fan of uh, i don't i think i'm generally fine with so long as it comes from honey, so long as it comes from raw cane sugar, but these uh, white sugars, I, I don't think they're the best for you. Glucose, no. Uh, natural flavor, that's a definite no. Okay, so this is no good. When it says natural flavor, that is a deception. What they're saying is essentially that the, the flavor is derived from a natural source, an apple, a peach, a pear, but they're not telling you anything about how they processed it because they took that natural flavor and they completely raked it. So, 
no good, no good. Let's go into frozen vegetables. Uh, actually, we can skip that. I, I think generally speaking, we, we all know frozen foods, they're not the highest quality. You just gotta look at the ingredients. Just make sure if you're getting a, a bag of frozen peas that it's only peas and not any other preservative added into it. Uh, wet cat food, napkins. Okay, yeah, uh, that, that's an interesting section. Let's go into there. Uh, Non-alcoholic beverages and energy drinks. Okay, so this obviously is a no-go. Pepsis and Dr. Peppers. Let's say I'm feeling for some juice, right? I want some apple juice, pineapple juice. Uh, I'll drink fruit juice if it's high quality. So let's just uh, pick, ooh, let's pick this one up right here. Allen's apple juice from concentrate, 100%. Read the ingredients. Let's see if this passes. Apple juice from concentrate, water, concentrate apple juice, vitamin C. Nope, it does not pass. The reason it does not pass is because of, I, I don't eat any isolated vitamins of any kind, vitamin C, vitamin D, because when you isolate them out of the natural organism, out of the pineapple or wherever they were sourced, they take a completely different form. All these vitamins, like your Flintstone gummies, this stuff is just like big pharma light, light pharma. It's just a, a light form of pharmaceuticals, so I want nothing to do with that. Let's see what else I can get my hands on. Kool-Aid jammers. No way. Uh, let's look at this. This is another interesting spot. Mio water flavor. So a lot of people, they'll look at this because it says zero calories on it and think that this is good for them. But li like I told you before, zero calories means zero energy zero energy food should be giving you energy if it's not giving you energy then what are you eating it's nothing but pure chemicals so yeah i can probably put this in my water and it won't make me gain weight but uh, who cares if i rip six pack abs this, this is just going to show up as cancer five years later so don't be afraid of calories that's a non-issue oh, man it, it's i'm telling you when you're in a grocery store if you eat like me and my wife uh, my wife and i it's uh, about 90, 95% of the stuff is off limits. It's really slim pickings out here if you want to eat truly pure. I'm trying to look for some good juice so you guys can get an example of what, what you should actually drink. Uh, we'll go to the next aisle. Canada Dry, Cola, Dr. Pepper. Oh my goodness. What's happened in the West is a crime. This is a military operation, man. The kind of stuff they put in the food, these people are criminals and they should be uh, uh, hanged publicly. Okay, let's look at this. Mott's Clamato vegetable juice. Looks pretty tasty. Ingredients. Come on. Water, tomato paste, sugars. Uh, sugar is not bad, but I don't like that. They, they're always using that white sugar, which is no good for you. Uh, cane sugar is fine. Um, monosodium glutamate, nope. Citric acid, nope. Uh, yellow FCF Brilliant Blue. Be a brilliant idea to put that away. That's no. Let's keep going. Chips, obviously, no go. It's it's very rare that I find some good chips out here when it's just, uh, let's say, some grain, some salt, cooked in coconut oil, but. Almost all of the all of these companies are cheaping out. They want to use the cheapest oils possible, which is seed oils, canola oil, soybean oil, rapeseed oil. What's the other one? Uh, popular one, vegetable oil. That stuff. Nope. Haram. Haram. God says to eat what is good and lawful from the earth. Here's another good section to stop off at. So seeds, uh, seeds and nuts. I eat seeds and nuts, not really seeds, more so nuts, but you, you got to take a look because I'm telling you, these people can't help themselves. They're trying to get you on every angle. Almost every nut I see, bar none, has uh, some kind of seed oil in it. They, they cook it in canola oil. Let's take a look at Great Value Mountain. So... Peanuts, raisins, almonds, cashews, milk chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, 
cocoa paste, milk, soy lecithin. That's something you'll notice in almost every chocolate. There's very few chocolates that are actually good quality out there. They Almost all of them have this soy in there. No good. And natural flavor. Sugar, rice starch, uh, radish. Duh -duh. Yeah, this one doesn't pass. Uh, let me find, let's say, okay, dry roasted and seasoned peanuts. Looks pretty good, right? Just peanuts. Well, you got to take a look at the back. Make it a habit. Everything you eat, everything you put in your body, read the darn ingredients, okay? Th they put seed oils in everything. So if you're going to put it in your body, make sure to read. I, I guarantee, I've never seen this brand before, but uh, I guarantee you it has seed oils in it. Let's look. Peanuts, salt, corn, maltodextrin, no good. Corn syrup, salt is no good. Potato starch, okay. Spice, okay, onion powder, there you go. Sunflower oil, oil, sunflower oil disodium, blah, 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 blah. Yep, no good. Sunflower oil and uh, various artificial flavors. Can't do that. Let's check this out. Uh, compass dried apricots. They put in the fruit as well. This brand, I think, is generally pretty good. They're on the nice list, not the naughty list. Apricots, oh, sulfites. Never mind. Never mind. Don't eat that one. I think their dates are good though, or their figs. Where are they? Not seeing them here. Uh, the dates. Okay, there you go. The last one was naughty. This is nice. Just pitted dates, no sulfites. That's edible. That's not haram. Uh, canned fruit, usually loaded with preservatives. Ah, yes, the best section of them all, the canola oil. Look at that. Low trans fat free, low in cholesterol. This is a criminal behavior. This is a criminal concoction right here. You should not be afraid of trans fats and saturated fat. Uh, no, sorry, not trans fats is an issue. You should not be afraid of saturated fat and cholesterol. You should be afraid of things that were invented in a laboratory less than a hundred years ago. Uh, what else is there? Sweeteners. I don't eat sweeteners. White sugar, no good. If you're gonna have sugar, have cane sugar. Uh, we looked at fruits, all this chocolate. See, I'm just gonna randomly pick out any one of your favorite chocolates. They all have soy in them. Okay. Kit Kat Caramel Crisp. I didn't even look at this one, right? I, I, I didn't even plan for this. Just randomly picked it. Look at the ingredients. Sugar, modified milk, cocoa butter, palm kernel, vegetable oils, naughty, rapeseed, salt. Okay, so this doesn't have uh, soy les lecithin in it. No. Actually, no, it does. Uh, rapeseed lecithin. Same thing. Okay. No good. Hold on. Again. God says, eat that which is good and lawful in the earth and follow not the footsteps of the shaitan. God says he made lawful for us good things. So when God calls certain things unlawful, they're not just, it's not just arbitrary that God picks these things out, okay? Um, he, he made certain things unlawful because they're genuinely bad for us. They cause us harm. And like a, one example is idol sacrifice meat. When you eat knowingly, intentionally, without un under, with full knowledge of what was done to this meat, and it was sacrificed to, let's say, Vishnu or Shiva, some false idol, that meat carries curses, and it, it has some ethereal effect on you. It actually is bad for you, and including, of course, things that are not from the earth that are bad for you. Let's look at the juices. Okay, I know there's one good brand out here. Yep, yeah, this... Whenever I'm down in a tough situation, simply apple palm is always there for me. Look at the ingredients. 100% apple juice. That's what I'm talking about. That's an ingredient list. But I'm going to say this j just because this is another thing. Read everything. Just because a brand has one flavor, which is on the nice list, it d d don't blindly buy all the rest of the flavors. For some other reason, some odd reason, it, the other flavors might just have these preservatives and bad stuff in there. So you got to be careful. Read everything. So we, we, we just looked at simply apple juice. Let's look at their lemonade. 
you would expect it to be good because the apple juice is high quality. Filtered water, okay, that's fine. Cane sugar, lemon juice, lemon pulp, raspberry puree, everything's good except natural flavor. That's on the naughty list, no good. What other sections can we look at? Well, we, we are living in a society which is in a state of free fall. Uh, everything is low quality from the entertainment to the music to the air to the words to the food. It, it, it is a total degeneration of the human species because we decided to follow the footsteps of the shaitan. We thought we were too smart for these holy books. Uh, they're old, they're outdated, we're smart, we have a science, we know better about human health, we know better about uh, morality and uh, human purpose. This is what you get. This is where their science, so-called, has led us. Okay, here's the cheeses. I come here often. I like to snack on cheese. So remember how I told you before that I eat uh, usually one meal a night and I'll snack on fruits and nuts throughout the day. I'll, I'll usually accompany those fruit snacks with some cheese just because I like it. So cheese, you got to be careful as with everything. What cheese looks good here? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Laughing Cow. I used to eat that as a kid. Is it naughty or is it nice? Uh, modified milk ingredients. Uh, sodium phosphate. Citric acid. Nope. Naughty. Let's keep going. Look at these chips right here. These look like they could be fairly good quality. Fairly high quality. But as with everything you have to read. Enriched wheat flour, eh, vegetable oil, nope, naughty. Let's go down or go around to the other section of cheese. Balderson is hit and miss. Okay, I know Balderson, some of it is good, some of it's not. Okay, milk is good, cream, salt, fine, bacterial culture, good, calcium chloride. With the cheeses, you gotta watch out for calcium chloride. It's in almost every single one of them. I know one of these Baldersons is good, but uh, I can't remember which one. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this stuff. This stuff is incredible. Uh, unpasteurized milk, bacterial culture, salt, rennet, and lysozyme. I don't know what that is. I think it might be some bacterial culture. If that's the case, then this is good. You can eat that. I think the Castello Brie also is high quality. Ingredients, uh, pasteurized milk. Uh, I don't really like that it's pasteurized, but you can't really avoid that in the West. Salt, bacterial culture, microbial enzyme, good. P. Camemberti, I think that's some kind of animal product. This is good. You can eat that. Eat that one guilt free. Uh, let's see, one more cheese right here. Okay, so we have our finest, extra mature ingredients, milk, salt, rennet, bacterial cultures. That's what I'm talking about, man. Let's go to the cold cuts. Uh, or just the meats in general. Mm, okay. Hot dogs, garbage, bologna, garbage. Gotta look, man. Gotta be careful. Oh. Let's see. Uh, what would be a good one to start with? The samosa is no good. Yeah, the meat generally is good. Just, just make sure when you're reading the meat, when you're buying any, and let's say it's pre-season. Just make sure again you look at it and confirm that there's no artificial types of flavors in there. It's just salt, pepper, regular spices, that kind of thing. Simple. Pickles. You gotta be careful. So it looks pretty good. A natural way of preserving food. It's existed since ancient times, but see the modern rendition. Cucumber, okay, water, salt, vinegar, peppers, may contain tree nut sulfites. Ugh. No good, sulfites. 
I'm trying to find as well uh, the canned meat section. There's actually a, a, a pretty quick and convenient meal that some of you can get is uh, salmon. It's cheap and fills the stomach, gives you some good quality proteins and fats. Let me see. Actually, before I go there, let me make a quick stop here in the syrups. So obviously, I love honey. I love cane sugar. And 100% uh, maple syrup, that's another great way to sweeten your meals. Don't be afraid of sweetening things up. Your, your body needs sugar. It operates off of sugar as one of its primary fuel sources. Don't have any issue with that. Uh, right here, canned meats. So, so this brand is kind of a hit and miss. Br uh, Brunswick sardine fillets. Take a look at it. Got to read the ingredients. Some of the flavors are good. Some of them are not. Sardine fillets. Okay. Water. Maltodextrin. Nope. Uh, let's see. See sardines and soya oil. Nope. That soy oil is going to cause you issues. Sardines and spring water. Okay, that looks promising. Turn to the back. Sardines, spring water. That's nice. That's good. And only, what, $1.97. And it'll fill you up. You get two cans of that. You feel good for probably six, seven hours. Mm, what else is there? Let's go to the tuna. No, it's okay. Okay, clover leaf flaked white tuna. Where's the ingredients on this? Oh, come on. There you are. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Pleasantly. Albacore tuna, water, sea salt. Perfect. That's good. Let me see if there's any other sections that are interesting. Yeah, salad dressings. Ketchup, all this stuff, it all has seed oils in it. You want to avoid it. Another place we can go is the dairy section. And the main thing I would say with that, with the milk, obviously animal products load up on them. But with whatever dairy or meat that you get, uh, try to get the highest fat possible. So the fattiest meat, the, I mean, the best option, if you're able to get your hands on some, it's kind of difficult in the West, is raw, unpasteurized, full fat dairy. If you can get that at some farm, then yeah, you're golden. But if not, if you have to shop at a grocery store like I do, then just pick up the, the highest fat that you can find. So let's look at the stuff here. I don't even know. I think the highest we have is perhaps like 3.25%. 3, 3 uh, make sure there's no vitamins and stuff added in. Yeah, 3.25% seal test probably go with that if there isn't anything higher. Normally my wife does the shopping. Uh, well, I buy it, but uh, she goes and picks up the stuff. That's the main thing, because again, the, the fat contains all the nutrients, all the firefighters that are going to deal with the, that, that toxic buildup in your body from living in this industrial, atheist, capitalist, slash socialist, slash communist society. Next up, let's go to, where is the bread section? That's another... Uh, another hot one mm. and I guess so uh, while I'm trying to find the bread section I want to also let you know that uh, like uh, when it comes to sweetening food uh, this would be my tier list it would be so top number one is honey and of course because God says in the Quran that uh, honey is a healing for men how can we be afraid of sugar honey is just basically sugar uh, but it's, it's, it's in a good form uh, how can we be afraid of sugar when God says honey, which is basically just sugar, is a, a healing for men? So that's number one. If you want to sweeten your teas, sweeten your, don't want to say coffee because uh, I don't recommend coffee, but um, whatever sweet dish or drink you're having, you want to find a good way to sweeten it, honey. Then slightly, oops, sorry about that, uh, slightly lower on the tier list would be, let's say, um, maple syrup. Uh, maple syrup is still fantastic. I'd, I'd be happy to have that too. Honey and maple syrup, then slightly low down is any raw form of sugar. So raw, and I, I would still eat this, it's still good. Raw cane sugar, uh, Punjabi shakar, gur, jaggery, and then that stuff, perfect, no problem. But uh, try to stick to the highest level. Then lower down from that would be your brown sugars. 
So brown sugar, it's a little more processed. It's not full raw cane sugar, but the, uh, once we get to that level in the tier list, the brown sugar, I don't eat any of it anymore. Uh, I, I completely tap out of it, whereas I will eat foods with raw cane sugar in it. Brown sugar, then one step lower from that would be white sugar. I never eat that. Then finally, one step lower from that would be natural sweeteners like stevia. I never eat that. Then absolute lowest bottom tier. You never want to go there. You're scraping the bottom is artificial sweeteners like aspartame. That that stuff is just, there, there's no nutritional value in it whatsoever. It's just chemicals being added into your body. And uh, yeah, you might not, like I said, you might not gain fat off of it, but it'll just show up as cancer five years later. So that's, that's my sweet tier list. Honey, maple syrup, um, any form of raw cane sugar, shakar jaggery, below that brown sugar, white sugar, stevia, sweeteners. And uh, I, I think that that'll give you a pretty good reference point on what you're going to pick out or what you should pick out whenever you're grocery shopping. There's the bread section. Now that we're here, I want to say regarding bread, it is very, very difficult to find good quality bread in the West. And again, I would say, generally speaking, if your problem is being overweight, if you want to lose some pounds, then stay away from the bread. It's, uh, it could be problematic for you. Just It just makes you gain weight. But let's say if you're a little underweight, you're skinny, you want to pack on some size, then don't worry about eating bread so long as it's good quality. Okay, Don't, don't be worried about the grains then. Let's look at all this. Okay. Oh, uh, ingredients, ingredients. Unbleached wheat flour, water, multigrade, and seed blend. See, I'm a little iffy on the seed blend because I don't know if the seeds they're using have canola oil in them or sunflower oil. Whole grain rye flour, rye flour sugars, honey, whole grain, wheat, whole wheat flour, culture, salt, ground wheat, lactic acid ascorbic acid enzymes yeah this one is almost good it's almost there but uh, the ascorbic acid and what was the other one in there uh, yeah the ascorbic acid I, I, I'd rather I'd rather get something else these don't even start with your white breads and your uh, processed kind of so-called smart bread no no that's just a uh, you're just asking to have your belly spill over your trousers. Look at this. Multigrain, nine grains. Okay. Enriched, enriched wheat flour, water, multigrain blend, wheat bran, flaxseed, cornflake, oat flakes, rye flour, soy grits. Soy grits I'd rather stay away from. Sugar, not good quality sugar, rolled oats, flax seeds, apple cider vinegar, rye flakes, ascorbic acid. Nope. I know it's tough. I know it's tough, but uh, like I said, it, it is slim pickings in the West. If you want to eat quality, if you uh, want, and even then, it's still not the highest quality. That's that's a tough pill to swallow because uh, our foods, they're wrapped in plastic. They're, it, you know, they're grown in greenhouses vegetables and fruits which would normally take three months to grow they grow them in three weeks in these greenhouses nothing is good quality here but it's about getting the best that's possible and uh, I think of that verse in the Quran where um, remember the companions of the cave when they wake up from their slumber and they're about to go out into the marketplace and buy something to eat and they said let us go into the marketplace and find something which is purest find that which is purest and that's basically that that should be your mindset when you're in the superstore go into the market and find what is purest do your you can't complain about these health problems if you're not doing your best do your best on your end and then leave the rest on god and pray to him and specifically regarding grains which we were just talking about before i would say your best bet would be some kind of if you want to go that route uh i, I like to treat myself with grains every now and then sourdough bread but uh, make sure to read the ingredients because they mess around with that sourdough bread is good though uh, or make your breads at home rotis chapati uh, rice white rice brown rice is good just a minimal processing. That's what you're going for with the grains. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, let's go through here. Frozen foods. 
shepherd's pie, um, macaroni and cheese, no way. Um, frozen vegetables, sirloin beef burgers, your, all this stuff. It doesn't even matter what it is, all this frozen food here, it's just gonna have preservatives, chemicals. It's no good, it's all uh, good food that's been raped. It's been raped, so it's no good anymore. Let's just pick up a random one. Uh, that looks pretty good. Jane's Boneless Bites. You take a look. Uh, chicken breast, water, toasted wheat crumbs, wheat flour, whole grain wheat flour, modified cornstarch, no good. Canola oil, no good. Sugars, sugar, dextrose, no good. Yeah, man, be careful when you're out here in the superstore. Uh, treat it as if you're navigating through a minefield. And uh, I can't stress it enough. I can't stress it enough. Everything you see, turn that sucker around and read that label. Because it looks can be deceiving. It can look high quality. Like there's this one tomato sauce I see here. Not tomato sauce. It's a pasta sauce. And it looks like it would be from a, a reasonably reputable brand uh, that would use higher quality ingredients. It's called... Uh, they make all kinds of tomato sauce, but either way, it looks like it'd be good, but then you turn it around, they use sunflower oil. So just be vigilant of those things. Uh, and I think, yeah, that, that should wrap up the video. You guys get a general idea. So you see my process, all right? I, I read it. I read everything. I read everything before I ingest it. And if I don't know what's in it, I don't eat it. So sometimes you go to restaurants, they won't know what's the ingredient in the food they're cooking. Let's say they're making, I don't know, you go to a Mexican restaurant, they're giving you a bean burrito. The beans are pre-made sometimes. You, you have to ask them about everything. Because remember, we don't want to eat this haram stuff. We don't want to eat. God has made lawful for us good things. He's done this for our own benefit. We don't want to eat things that don't come from the earth. And they, they, they may very well could have cooked the beans in soybean oil and canola oil. And you got to ask them about everything. you got to ask them about the oil they use. you got to ask them, uh, do they clean the pan? So let's say you find a restaurant and uh, they, they are able to cook in olive oil or even better. Olive oil is good. Coconut oil is good. But even better than that, animal fat. Butter, ghee, that's the highest quality. Um, you got to make sure, did they wipe down the grill? Because you don't want the residues of those seed oils on there. And I know this sounds crazy, but I'm, I am militant. I am militant. Not because I'm going to lose my abs if I eat this stuff. No, I'm not going to lose my abs. I could eat, I could have a, I could have a bag of Doritos every now and then, every week, every two weeks. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect my body composition one bit. I could be like these red pill guys, but I don't do that because it, it's not about the abs. It's about foods that are either going to bring me closer to God or further away from God. And uh, y you don't want to even have a drop of anything that's going to muddy and uh, fog up your spiritual receptors. Let's uh, make a quick stop here. I think the the Lindors are pretty good. Some of them. The 100% the cocoa. Uh, let's see. Bold and dark, 95%. Cocoa mask, cocoa butter, cocoa powder, sugar. Uh, kind of iffy on that because it's not the quality sugar. It's the white sugar. Ooh. But yeah, like I was saying, you guys get the point. Read everything. Make sure. Look at your labels. Don't assume. And if you don't know, don't eat it. Because in the end, nobody is responsible for your health but you. Your health is your wealth. I mean, people will pay extra money to put the highest quality gas into their car so that it's easier on the engine and it extends the car's life. Well, I mean, your body is your engine, right? Why would you not want to put the highest quality food in there? People say, oh, it's expensive. <sighs> not really. Not really. Um, it, if you don't waste and you're mindful of what you pick up and... You stick to a routine then honestly it, it works out to just about the same and even if it was more expensive that's fine it, it's worth it it's worth more than uh, getting that extra that nice jacket you saw on sale or an extra watch or a nicer car it's, it's getting quality food let's look at this right here as well 
coconut water. Organic. Okay, good. Ingredients. Fair Trade Certified Organic Coconut Water. There you go. That's good. It's godly food or godly drink. So uh, now that you have a little bit of an understanding behind the process or my mentality when I'm picking up foods, when my wife is picking up foods, I, I hope you guys can employ this in your own life as well because the food is a war. It's a war. It's how the shaitan gets to you. You want to be on that higher vibration. You, you, you want to draw closer to God. You want to feel more intensely the prayers. You want to... Uh, it just be in, in, in a holier and more purified state, it, you got to get the food, man. you got to get the food in order. Because like I said, God says, eat what is good and lawful in the earth. He made lawful for us good things. 90% of the stuff you see in that grocery store, they are not from the earth and therefore they are not lawful for you. So I would tread with caution. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all I got to say on the matter. I hope this talk was a blessing. And yeah, peace to you. Remember, the seed abounds, so keep your eyes wide open. Peace out. Peace and blessings in the name of the Most High, viewer. My name is Walid Naim, and I am a zealous submitter to the one true God, the creator of all mankind. Do you notice something wrong with the world? Something strange? Despite us having a church, synagogue, and mosque in every neighborhood, how has this entire Western civilization fallen into abject atheism, nihilism, and savagery? Why does life just seem so dull, so meaningless, and so devoid of anything real in the Occidental world? Despite the ubiquitous presence of these religious institutions, why are our so-called Muslim sons in large numbers drinking, smoking, partying, and chasing after women, with no seeming desire to do anything more with their life other than satisfy their base pleasures when God has commanded them to be clean, righteous, and responsible leaders of their community? And why are our hijabi so-called Muslim daughters walking around with tight jeans that reveal their figure with TikTok accounts posting semi-provocative, self-absorbed videos of themselves online for the world to see when God has commanded them to lengthen their garments and be modest in their mannerisms. What has happened here? These young men and women are supposed to be making themselves right before God while raising the next generation of ardent defenders of the holy faith. But it seems that Islam features no more in their lives other than a scarf on their head, a Friday fidgeting around in the mosque when their parents force them to go against their will, or a decorative hanger in their car. At this rate, if God allows us to continue going down the road it is, then Islam and the Quran will become pretty much non-existent in the lives of most of our descendants, if it wasn't already non-existent now. If we do not take a stand soon, in a few generations our children's children will likely be indistinguishable from the secular West. Is that the kind of world we want to live in? Our kids to live in? A world practically devoid of the remembrance of the one God and all things sane? I obviously can't speak for you, but for my own self, I can personally say, count me out of it. I'm not going to sit here and just watch my brothers and sisters, those who claim to believe in God alone, believe in Judgment Day, His prophets and angels, and all the other aspects of this holy creed, get duped into going to hell. I am not going to let this happen without at least something of an effort on my end to reroute this dark trajectory. So, again, how in the world do we end up here? There is a mosque in practically every neighborhood in the West, and no shortage of donations that get dropped in their boxes. They have had lots of funding, lots of time, and unquestioning support from their respective congregations, yet somehow have been run over by the secular atheist. All of their so-called Muslim children go to the atheist, secular public schools for most of their week to be taught beliefs that are completely incompatible with the Qur'an. And we wonder why they have ended up the way they are. If these houses, and by these houses I mean the mosques, were truly of God that were doing everything right, then why would our Lord let them get so decisively trampled upon by their enemies? Why do the wicked have all of the reins of power here? Clearly, something is not adding up. Well, it is my thesis here today that the vast, vast majority of mosques that exist in this world today have lost their way and follow a religion which is completely foreign to the Qur'an. This is why they have failed so miserably in the West, and it seems that God has forgotten them. In truth, the real reason behind their shortcoming is that they, and many of us, have forgotten God himself, which is why he has left us here collecting our bitter receipts. So, what are my exact criticisms of the mosques today? 
as a Muslim and a man committed to the truth above all else, what are my personal gripes with their institution, which claims to be for God? The first glaring problem I can think of is that the majority of people who call themselves Muslim have allied themselves with a body of literature that is foreign to the word of God, treating it equal to and in fact above the Quran itself. Of course, I am talking about the Hadith. Listen, the facts are this. There is no justification within the Quran which tells us to follow this Hadith stuff, which came hundreds of years after the Prophet Muhammad died, and therefore he could have had no ability to oversee what people have said about him and determine if it is true or false. It is now becoming crystal clear, especially in the last 10 to 20 years, that many, many things that have been ascribed to him in their most quote-unquote authoritative texts, which they call their Sahih Hadiths, are forgeries that directly contradict God's final revelation. To take these words of men, i.e. the Hadith, and hold them to be equally authoritative to the words of God would be breaking the first and most important commandment, which is to worship God alone, making no equals with him. To say that these supposed words of Muhammad, which are not even Muhammad's own words, but simply very doubtful rumors about what people who existed hundreds of years after him say he said, that have been decided upon by the scholars as authoritative holds equal, or in fact any way in our faith comparable to the verbatim words of God himself, the Holy Quran, is idolatry. You are exalting man's words to the status of divinity, which should only be given to God's words. Nothing comes even close to the Quran, because God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is its author. This includes the Hadith too, which pales in comparison and is superfluous to the glorious Quran. If you are interested in seeing a full refutation of the Hadith, you may watch my video titled, A Defense of Prophet Muhammad, David Wood and Hadith Exposed, which is linked below. In it, along with refuting and putting in his place the worst opponent of Islam on the internet, Mr. David Wood, I also expose how the Hadith is completely contradictory to the Quran and the source of much of the Muslim world's problems. It is a two-hour long documentary where I seek to demonstrate the true character of Muhammad in the Quran, defending his history and personality with primary source quotations. I clear the last prophet of God's name from the people who have tarnished his reputation the most, which are certain types of Christians, and, sad to say, hadith-following Muslims, which have said many terrible things about him. No, Muhammad was not a money-hungry, tyrannical warlord who married a six-year-old girl. He was a shy, humble, meek man who married adult women, had compassion for even his worst enemies, and oftentimes had a tough time even standing up for himself out of fear of hurting other people's feelings. This is all demonstrated in detail in my video. Once again, the link for that will be in the description under the tab, The True Character of Muhammad in the Quran. So that is the first problem with the mosques, the reason for which I feel they have been forsaken by God their adoption of an apostate literature which contradicts their foundational scripture. The second point of contention I have with many of the mosques is their seeming unwillingness to say anything controversial which may make them face persecution from their government. The fact that 9-11 was not only an inside job, but the fact that no planes hit the Twin Towers on that day, and the whole charade was a hoax designed by the governments of the world to forever frame the Muslim people as terrorists and justify invasions in our countries, should be taught to every man, woman, and child. This great fraud of the September attacks has left such a lasting, enduring reputation on every brown person, and Muslim in general, that it should be discussed in every mosque. Our people are not responsible for that crime, but it was the governments of the world who carried out that plot and framed us for it. 9-11 is just only one small example, though. There are many, many other quote-unquote conspiracy theories, which are really just conspiracy facts, avoided by the mosques due to their controversy, like the fact that the monetary system in the West is an ungodly scam based on usury, the fact that the so-called healthcare system is a predatory empire which doesn't try to cure anybody but instead makes money off of human suffering, the fact that sodomite propaganda is being promoted to the masses, including our children, and the fact that the thing which I will call the c 19 er to avoid censorship, was a hoax perpetrated by the powers that be to greatly expand their police state, censorship incentives, and surveillance systems worldwide in order to create their new world order, and much more. These governments that have occupied our lands are de facto terrorist regimes, and the mosques seem to say nothing of it. They appear to be more concerned with not being labeled extremists while they live their comfortable, 
well-funded lives avoiding topics that are hard to deal with due to the abject persecution they bring. That is my second problem with them. They're at the very least lack of awareness, or if not, perhaps lack of willingness to address the real geopolitical situation going on in the world. And lastly, my third trouble with the mainstream mosques, which can also be put into the category of conspiracy facts, is their complete ignorance on the true nature of the earth. It may sound as a shock to you, my viewer, that the Quran, the Bible, and in fact all of the ancient scriptures teach the earth is flat and stationary. This is the only model of the world which is compatible with those texts and also scientifically provable. This flat earth conspiracy, which should really be called the globe earth conspiracy, is one of the biggest lies of the modern world we are told, and goes in line with what I said earlier about the endemic corruption of the governments of the world. Everything you have been told about where you live is a fabrication, and the space agencies are a shameless hoax. For a fully detailed presentation on the subject of flat earth, where I demonstrate the science, the history, the philosophy, the verses in the Bible and Quran proving it, and much more, you can read my book titled The Flat Earth Manifesto, which is linked in the description. This work runs to nearly 1,200 pages and is practically a textbook on not only the topic of flat earth, but the subject of physics proper, and I expose the biggest fraudulent religion of the West, which is science worship, otherwise known as scientism. As with all of my work, it too is available for free. No, you do not live on a pathetic speck of dust spinning around in the middle of nowhere in space. You live in a brilliant, intelligently designed terrarium created by God and are at the center of the universe. Again, to learn more, the link to the Flat Earth Manifesto will be in the description. Those right there are my three biggest scores against the mosques of today. There are more points I could bring up, but these are the major ones. These are the controversies which have estranged me from the rest of the so-called Muslim world. Believe me when I say that I would love to join them and that it hurts me so deeply that I have to pit myself up against the very institution I was born and raised in, the mosques I attended from childhood whose carpets upon which I walked, stood, prayed, and listened to the preaching in my earliest years. But that is the price to pay for the truth. My commitment to God and what is right is more important than my emotional attachments to a place that was once dear to my heart. Simply put, this is why I think God has forsaken us. This is why I think that the mosques have been steamrolled by the secular atheist. It is because most of us have abandoned the word of God, neglected preaching the truth, and instead chosen comfort over courageous action. That is my thesis to why this great falling away in the West has taken place. If this sounds shocking to you, if it sounds so unbelievable that the majority of the so-called Muslim world could be deceived so badly, then I simply have these verses in the Quran to show you. In the name of God, the Almighty and the Merciful. Chapter 6, verse 116. And if thou obey most of those upon the earth, they will lead thee astray from the path of God. They follow only assumption, and they are only guessing. Chapter 25, verse 30. And the messenger will say, O oh my Lord, my people took this Qur'an as a thing abandoned. God has really predicted this a millennia ago. He knew that the people who follow what is really right are few and far between, that the majority of men and women are led astray, and the people who claim to love Muhammad the most, i.e. mainstream Muslims, would abandon the glorious Qur'an. God has revealed to us a thousand years ago that this all would be the case. It is my mission, therefore, by the will of God, to band together with like-minded believers who have understood the truth and work together to build a new institution from the ground up, founded upon prudent fear. We need to start fresh, start anew. We need to build a new mosque where people can hear the unfiltered preaching from the Quran alone, where men and women can get married, where children can play and be educated in the truth, and where the name of the Most High God, without any associate partners, can be remembered. We need a group of highly dedicated men who will raise and defend this institution with their own hands if need be, and go out into the world warning people of the punishment of God, bearing witness to the truth of his oneness. That is my mission, my viewer. If you found that this mission of mine has touched your heart and is something you want to get involved with, then feel free to contact me in the email below. I am located in Ontario, Canada, and I'm looking forward to form a community with like-minded believers who want to contribute to this great cause. I am neither a nationalist nor racially biased. If you follow the Quran alone and believe in the truth, then as far as I'm concerned, you are my brother in the faith. 
I prefer you over someone of my own kindred who denies God and commits corruption in the earth. My loyalties are primarily ideological, not racial. Remember, my viewer, that this life is short. Everything we do and don't do is recorded by God and will either bear witness for us or against us on the day of judgment. Hell is eternal, and I do not know about you, but as for me, I want to meet my Creator in the best state possible. I want to spend my life struggling to build up my people, the true Muslims, so that God may be pleased with me on that day. If you are interested in that, then feel free to join me. If not, then find something else good to do which will prepare you for your appointment with the Most High. That is where we are all going anyway. With that being said, I say peace and God bless to all of you good people. Take care, everyone.